Ball State and BYU. Anna Clefane and the Cardinals. Nanny Falatea and the Cougars looking to defend the home court right now on BYU TV. Welcome to Provo, Utah. College basketball this afternoon. The Ball State Cardinals in from Muncie, Indiana to take on the BYU Cougars. Dave McCann, Kristen Kozlowski, we wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving weekend. How did everything turn out at the house? I am still stuffed, yeah. Dave, to this day, but I'm ready for some basketball here. This is one of the great sports days on BYU TV. Basketball this afternoon. Football tonight with game day leading up to BYU and Stanford over on FS1. But we started with this one tonight, and let's look at our showcase, our BYU Sports History Showcase, presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. A big week already for Amber Whiting, picking up her first career win in the Marriott Center back Over Carroll College, a 28 to 22 halftime score, but BYU exploded for 26 points in that third quarter frame, out rebounded the Fighting Saints 41 to 22. They had it rolling, 19 assists, 14 turnovers. Those are the numbers you want to see from this BYU team who has struggled with turnovers this season. Here come the impact players for today's game presented by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Let's continue with Falatea. She's the new quarterback on the basketball team. And if you're a quarterback at BYU, you've got pressure to produce. she got a lot of pressure on her shoulders, and she's only a sophomore at five foot nine. sees the floor so well, facilitates the offense. She's very strong at getting the rim, plays with a swagger about her game, a lot of confidence, doesn't get too high or too low for this team. A three-level score that BYU continues to count on. She's averaging 14.8 points per game, shooting about 37% from distance and had 17 points was three for five from three point against Carroll College. At the other end of the spectrum, senior Anna Clefane out of Taylor Mill, Kentucky, a deliverer for the Cardinals. At five foot ten last season, she suffered a season ending injury, but has come back even stronger, leading this team at 12 points per game. She's very active in their five out offense for Ball State. She scored 838 career points, so she's looking to reach that 1,000 career point mark this season, but this is a player that has to be active and have a big game for the Cardinals. Let's bring in the third member of our broadcast team, Kenzie Kerber. Kenzie. Dave, BYU is coming off a very dominant win against Carroll College, which really helps the confidence of this young team. These preseason games are all about finding their groove, learning, and getting better as a team, and that is exactly what BYU is doing. With the new coaching staff and a lot of new faces on the court, they are trying to define player roles and figure out their chemistry as a team, and they need to continue to do that today to get a win. Kenzie, thank you. Our starting lineups are presented by Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. And as the Cougars are introduced here at the Marriott Center, here's a look at the Cardinals. It'll be Becky, August daughter, Kiefer Bischoff, and Clefane for Brady Sally in his 11th season with 186 wins for Ball State, 323 over his career. The Cardinals are three and two, fresh off a route up in Logan against Utah State on Wednesday. For Amber Whiting and the BYU Cougars who come in two and four on the season, it'll be Barcelo, Falatea, Smiler, Bubakar, and Gustin. Gustin is a double-double machine. In fact, every time she takes the floor, she never leaves it without a double-double as Amber Whiting in her first year at BYU seeking her second win here on the Marriott Center floor. Lauren Gustin is a special player and certainly worth watching here this afternoon. She can rebound, she can score, kind of hidden last year with, with all the firepower with Gonzalez and Harding. Um, but now it's her show. She's the, she's the go-to. And, and what I love, Dave, is she's six foot one and fifth in the nation in rebounds per game, tied for first as well in double-doubles with six through six games. Keys to today's game are presented by Tim Daly Nissan. Let's start with the Cardinals. Well, first for the Cardinals, they're going to want to set the tempo in this one and push the pace. They want to play fast offensively, and they have the green light from their head coach to shoot it early in the shot clock. They're looking for threes or layups, and then they got to box out, do a good job on the boards, particularly Lauren Gustin, who we've already talked about, 
box her out, keep her off the boards, and create some extra opportunities on the offensive side as well. And for BYU this afternoon. Contested closeouts. Ball State averages 24 three-point attempts, which is 10 more than BYU takes per game. They're going to shoot it early in transition, so BYU's got to close out, balance, don't give up middle drive penetration, and then ball control. Limit those turnovers. It's been a bit of a Achilles heel for the Cougars this season is taking care of the basketball. Cougars are a negative 8.7 margin in turnovers, so that's going to be an emphasis in every game moving forward. Those are the keys presented by Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. It's kind of a running theme on campus with a men's team, too. Turnovers have been brutal here in the early stage of the season. BYU with wins over Washington State out of the Pac-12 and Carroll College back on Wednesday, 71-47. Losses at Colorado State, Montana State, number 16, Oklahoma, and Troy. Ball State out of the MAC. They've got wins over Indiana East. Butler beat Utah State 80-55 to on Wednesday. Losses uh, Tennessee Tech and against number nine, Notre Dame. Our opening tip-off is presented by Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. Whistle is sounded. We're ready for play here on a Saturday afternoon on BYU TV. It's BYU and Ball State, and the Cougars control the tip. So much of what happens today will be because of Falatea and how important of a role she plays on this offense. Well, she sets she's up the, the offense, and she's a player that can create as well. Kick to the corner, shot clock is winding down, and with two seconds on it, the layup is good. Smiler with her first two. Boy, it looked, Dave, like they were going to give it wasn't the ball away to Ball State early on. Those turnovers we talked about didn't look pretty in that possession, but Smiler doing a good job attacking when the shot clock's going down, not settling for that outside shot. Allie Becky with it. Probably the best player on this roster. Their numbers are down this season from what she was a season ago. And there's that quick trigger that we've been talking about. Bischoff, the 5'9 sophomore, big time shot right there. She averaged 33% coming in. Valenteo with it. Bulacar in to Gustin. This is where she makes a living. That one is convinced to roll in. BYU up four to three. That's exactly the look that BYU wants with their high-low. They want that entry pass coming from the top from Rose Bubakar because there's no help side. A lot of room for Gustin to work right or left shoulder. Clefane with it. And BYU opting to start this game in a zone, the two, three, and this is something that Coach Whiting's had to adapt. Just personnel and figuring out what works with this group, and they've been doing well in the zone. They'll mix it up as well and go man-to-man -man throughout the game. Shot clock winding down, an offensive board, but a shot clock violation as it didn't hit the rim, and the Cougars get the turnover. Ball State already right into this full court pressure. As I talked to head coach Brady Sally, he said, we'll mix it up. We're trying to make BYU uncomfortable. We'll press at times. We'll also switch when they come together on screen. Sometimes we may even throw in a zone. And a team that has trouble taking care of the ball, a full court press, it's going to be a handful. Bubakar down low, strong, up and in. She's got her first two. And BYU's up six to three. And she is so athletic and playing well, coming into her own. A lot of confidence in what she's able to do for this team. Lost the games, averaging 14 points per game. Bischoff with it. Gets it back from Clefane, up for her second three. That one's out. Offensive board for Ball State. Becky with the shot, and that one's up over the backboard, and the Cougars get the ball. Cardinals are not shy to throw up a high volume amount of three-point shots as we take another look. Offensively, BYU Rose, she puts that ball on the floor. She is a mismatch, particularly when she's guarded by a taller defender, showcasing that athleticism there. Cougars are three for three. Gustin. Now four for four. A hot start for BYU. And this high-low game was a big worry for Cardinals head coach Sally in that Gustin is so good down there. If she catches it low, 
And that help side's not there. She's going to go to work and finish. Out of bounds off of Clefane. And the Cougars have it. Annie Roush checks in off the bench for Ball State with 6.46 to go. And a change coming, bringing in Roush. She's six foot three senior. They're going to put her on Gustin and try to slow Gustin down more. It's been too easy for her to get positioned down low and be able to finish right around the rim. Smiler. Now Gustin. Alatea. Thought about the three, might have got away with a double dribble. Out come the Cardinals. Profane leaves it to Bishop, blocked by Smiler. Smiler out ahead. And uh, Falatea can't control it. The BYU playing some stingy defense here early on. I love the closeout right here. Watch the control of Smiler. Keeps her body off, locates the ball. Nice block. And you have to love the effort. She was trying to get it to Falatea for a quick bucket. Just a little too much heat on the pass. Allie Becky. Bischoff now will try the right side. Hit her first, missed her last two. Another offensive board. Gustin on the rebound. Well, this Cardinals team is shooting 24% from three point. That is down from last season when they averaged 32%, but they will not quit. They continue to shoot those threes. It's something that Coach Sally has pulled a lot of analytics as he's really analyzed what works for us. And he says we either want to shoot threes or layups. They have the green light in those areas. Gustin's fouled on the drive. And the fouls against Roush. BYU ball under the basket. 5.32 to go here in the first 20-second shot clock. And the Cougars up by five. Roush is doing a up for three. This one's strong. Back to Becky. Roush doing a good job staying top side, not allowing that entry pass from the high-low look. The feint on the drive knocks it in for her first, and it's eight to five. And that's where I think Ball State can really be effective against the zone. If they can pinch the gaps off the dribble and collapse the defense a little bit more, then they're going to have more wide-open looks on the draw and kick for a three. Bubakar. I'll tell you, a good three-point shooter. Missed her first a moment ago. Barcelo, back to Bubakar. Smiler, there's seven on the shot clock. Comes around the horn, everything opens up. Left-handed layup for Smiler, 10 to five. I thought she could have taken that three that she had on that right wing, Dave, and hesitated, but put the ball on the floor, really showcasing she can get to the rim as well. Three from the corner, and this one drops in for Allie Becky, her third on the season. 10 to 8. Ball State spent their holiday here in Utah, up in Logan on Wednesday, here in Provo on Saturday. Gustin with another bucket down low where she's so difficult to defend. And that pass coming from Falatea. Nice job just locating her on the lob. Has to be really timed perfectly. And Gustin does a good job on the release. Gustin with six to lead the Cougars. Bischoff, Clefane with it on the drive. Drops in her second in a row. Well, she's really figured out what works when she catches that ball and very quickly puts it on the floor, slashes to the basket for the mid range. She doesn't go all the way to the rim or Gustin's going to block her, but a nice pull up for the second straight time. Barcelo waits for Gustin. Here's Smiler. Gustin for three from the corner. On the fight for the rebound, it's off Ball State. Extra hustle by Gustin wins the possession for BYU. The Cougars will have the ball when we come back. Timeout, 3.17 to go here in the first. Smiler with two. BYU's up two on BYU TV. <laughs> BYU Basketball on BYU TV is brought to you by 
3D Industries. Honestly better. Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Waystar. And by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU football wraps up the regular season tonight against Stanford. BYU Sports Nation game day starts at 9 Eastern tonight, 7 Mountain, live from Stanford Stadium and from our BYU TV studios. The game's on FS1 at 11 Eastern, 9 Mountain, with the live post-game show back on BYU TV as soon as it's over. Historic matchup tonight between a pair of Latter-day Saint missionary quarterbacks, BYU's Jaron Hall, Stanford's Tanner McKee. That's later tonight, two-hour pregame show on BYU TV, 9 o'clock Eastern time. It'll be a long day. But it's the holidays. Oh, it's, These are it's good sports. days. It's a favorite, right? You're still stuffed from Thanksgiving. You can just lounge and watch sports. 317 to go here in the first. BYU up 12 to 10. Smiler over to Falatea. BYU, all 12 of their points to this point have come in the key. Two very different offensive game plans. BYU really wanted to isolate Gustin in there, and the Cardinals shooting the three. There's Gustin. Strong on the offering. Becky out with it. Clefane drives in. Fight for the board. And Falatea comes out with it. And Nani takes it in, backs it out. And she has such quick hands to pick up that rebound. And I just love how smooth. I think smooth is a great word to describe her, how smooth she plays with the ball in her hands. Now Smiler from the corner brings it up top. Ten on the shot clock. Smiler for three. Long rebound to Gustin. Now Barcelo. Bubakar in to Gustin. And she's fouled. She'll go to the line. Nice entry pass from Bubakar. Quiet on the offensive end so far. But a couple of good dishes inside. And she didn't hesitate. If she had hesitated, it's too late because the defense would have collapsed. But Rose very quickly getting out into the hands of Lauren Gustin. Uh, BYU's figured that out. I think it took a little bit, even in, against Carroll College. They were trying to get the entry pass from the right wing or the left wing, and that help side rotation could rotate quickly and take that away. But when they get the high-low look, it's much harder. It puts a lot more pressure on that backside defense. Gustin just 52% at the free throw line, a tweak of that number, and there's a lot of points waiting for her. Being that she gets fouled so often because she's such a physical player. Salem Hills High School, Salt Lake Community College, shooting 56% from the field. Off to a good season, double-double in every game. Gets two, BYU's lead back to four. 35 career double-doubles. She's always on double-double watch. She's got eight points and two rebounds here in the first. Well, she was on triple-double watch against Troy last Saturday where she had 21 points and 12 rebounds and eight assists. Alex Richard checks into the game, turns it over for Ball State. Barcelo to Falatea. So far to this point, Dave, I think BYU has been able to set the tone and really slow it down, not allow anything easy in transition for Ball State and just run their offense in the half-court set. Offensive foul on Falatea. A freshman stepping up, Sydney Bolden right here. Watch her step right in front of Falatea. She was clearly in that spot stationary before she got there. Now she's able to move. That's a misconception. She can still be moving slightly as long as she beat her to the spot. And holding that right elbow, I'm sure that that one stung just a little bit, but Bolden sacrificing, forcing the turnover. Becky having trouble facing that Cougar defensive group. A kick with 128 to go here in the first. BYU sticking to their defensive game plan in this 2-3 zone and really executing well, just packing it in. Now switching to a man for baseline out of bounds. Emma Calvert in the game for BYU. And knocks the ball away, but Pufang gets it back. Bolden. Now Becky up for three. Hand in her face. Marcella with a rebound. Falatea on the run. 
point. Marcella doesn't score a lot of points, averages just three, but she knows her role in this team and does a lot of the dirty work, picking up that rebound, also has an assist early in this game. Alatea hands it to Calvert. Under a minute to go here in the first. Barcelo had 12 against Oklahoma, so she's capable. Smiler from the corner, shot clock's at five. And a reach-in foul. This will go against Bolden, I think. She reacted initially, and it is her first. The coaching staff for Ball State doesn't like it. They wanted the travel call. A lot of contact as Smiler's being aggressive, driving in there. She's come out, trying to play downhill, not settling for outside shots. It's the ball on the floor right here. And they're watching that arm, the contact in the back of Smiler. I think that's where they got her. Too much contact. The officials didn't like it. Into the lane. Fight for the rebound. For shot attempt for Barcelo. Bolden out ahead. And the foul. She attacked three Cougar defenders. And a shot at a three-point play with 33 and a half seconds left. She's getting it done on the defensive end. We saw a moment ago she took a charge, and then look at her just slice through the defense right here, using her quickness, protecting the ball. I'm not sure where the foul was, but she's won herself a free throw. I love it from the freshman. She's been a spark off the bench for this Cardinals team. Six of nine from the stripe this season. And Barcelo on the rebound. And the Cougars can hold for the final shot. Just a second difference. Gustin fighting for position down low. Calvert looks in. And a whistle and a foul against Ball State. Alex Richard too physical in there. Holding Gustin as she is trying to post up and seal for the high-low look. So they're going to get her on the foul. But Allie Becky, that weak side... Help side defender was really sitting in the paint. That's where BYU has to look at the skip pass. From the corner for three. Good look by Falatea. Richard with it. Final seconds winding down. All the way in. And a foul with four seconds as Becky attacking the rim. And Falatea picks up the personal. And Becky stepped on the foot of the BYU defender. Watch her right foot on Gustin's as she steps right there. See that? Just tweaked the ankle briefly and kind of had to really sprint off the court a little bit just to recover herself gingerly. Crowd not sure where the foul was on that one either as Ariel Mackey Williams checks in. Four seconds left here in the quarter. Free throws good. Becky perfect nine from nine on the year. Preseason all Mac. Heading into the new year. Sophomore out of Brownsburg, Indiana. As a freshman, she averaged 11 points per game, was second on the team in scoring. And they Man. count on her, but as we mentioned, Dave, her number's down this season, just averaging seven points per game, still contributing in every single area, but not shooting the ball quite as well as she was last year. Time will wind down. The Cougars won't get a shot off. Not enough time to move down the floor with four seconds, so we come to the end of one. Pretty much right where we started, all tied up. 14 to 14, BYU and Ball State. Fewer turnovers and more baskets. tie after one. Well, she can go right shoulder, she can go left shoulder, but she does her work early down low and positions herself for this lob. 
BYU has continued to work on this and really improve the location of where it's coming into her. Well, she's a workhorse in there for BYU. A double-double queen this season. Six straight double-doubles in all six games, tied for first in all of the NCAA, and she has 36 career double-doubles. For her career, she averages a double-double, Dave, and she's just been, she's undersized at six foot one, but that doesn't matter. I mean, just her skill set to be able to go get the ball and rebound out of her area, which makes her so special for BYU. It is a gift for sure. Tomorrow night, the NCAA Tournament Selection Show for Women's Volleyball. BYU finished the regular season 21-6. and six. Tough schedule among those six defeats. You find 10th-ranked Pitt, number 5 Georgia Tech, number 8 Ohio State, and a pair of losses to number 2 San Diego. Watch BYU Sports Nation on Monday for all the tournament details. We'll find out tomorrow night where Heather Olmstead and the Cougars are starting the NCAA Tournament. They're not going to host. The last time they started on the road, uh, they went all the way to the championship. So we'll see how this one plays out. Three ball drops for Mole. 17 to 14, Ball State gets their first lead here early in the second quarter. And that's the first three point make for Hannah Mold this season. She's another one of those freshmen that come in along with Bolden and get some good time, but stepping up, knocking it down. When you're left open, BYU continues to pack it in on the defensive side in that 2 3. Smiler moves out of the double team. Gustin forced inside to Calvert and turned over. It's the third giveaway for BYU. Ball State also has three turnovers in the game. Golden back to Clefane. Now this Ball State team, a couple years ago, their head coach Sally adapted the positionless basketball. So all five can play out or they can cut through or post up. They're looking for mismatches and trying to identify that based on their strengths. Gustin picks up the offensive foul. And that is her first. Richard draws that foul, six foot one, the transfer from Butler. He's being physical inside with Gust and frustrated her a little bit, and too much of that left arm threw her to the ground. Lots of subs in for Brady Sally. The team up by three. Becky's got the ball as she re-enters the game. Lafayne on the drive, wide open from the corner, up for three. And behind the backboard. So Becky off target. BYU has the ball. And that's a wide open look for Becky, though, as we saw the drawn kick. That's what Ball State needs more of, pinching the gaps, getting into the middle of the zone, and then kicking it out to their shooters once the zone collapses. Out ahead, Barcelo, the lob for Calvert, off the glass and in. Hey, how about that from Calvert, Dave? I don't know that I expected this. That little tip in, she didn't bring it down. Clefane answers on the other end. 19 to 16. Our score box today is presented by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment. Clefane now, she has six points, three for three, and she has really figured out what works for her by putting the ball on the floor and playing downhill or pulling up for a mid-range jumper. Calvert throws it away. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be off of Richard. And the Cougars dodge a turnover as Bubakar checks in. And Barcelo will check out. And Bubakar is going to throw it in. Just a moment ago. Flipped it up there. In for two. Ball State's done a much better job this second quarter at adjusting on that lob pass, not giving it up easy as we see Smiler for the third time in this game. They're trying to run her off three. She puts it on the floor and gets all the way to the rim. Beat the shot clock again with a layup. Back to a one-point game. Off target is August daughter. And here come the Cougars' chance to regain the lead and that's a, not a shot that coach Sally wants he does not want those mid-range pull-ups of all the analytics he has pulled that does not work in their favor and the percentages are not there so he doesn't love that shot and with the zone that's what BYU's given him Gustin off the glass and in and 10 points now for Gustin 
BYU by one. Ball State by one as Becky answers right back. Very quickly, that's how fast they will come down and pull the trigger if you're not ready and you're not matched up. Even in the zone, BYU has to find shooters. Gustin looks into Calvert out of the corner. Mackey Williams. Here's Calvert. Turn around with the left hand. Fight for the rebound. She's got it. Kicked out to Bubakar. It'll be BYU ball on the kick. Shot clock will reset to 20 seconds on that kick. Barcelo's back in. Calvert will go out. Good hustle by Calvert after the short miss. And they win an extra possession. 21 to 20, 6-11 to go here in the first half. And BYU just out of sorts right here, not communicating. Who's taking the ball out of bounds? Mackie Williams for three from the corner. And the Cougars by two. First three-point make for BYU comes from Mackie Williams. Very capable three-point shooter. Bischoff to answer back. Bubakar on the rebound. Now the Cougars with some tempo. Smiler hiding out in the far corner. Waves her arms. Now she's got it. And fouled on the drive by Bischoff. Good first half for Smiler. And here's her first three by Ariel Mackie Williams. Very quickly setting her feet, being ready to shoot. And Mackie Williams, she's six for 12 before that, coming into this game from distance. Bubakar into the lane. Very physical player. She's fouled going up. And Bubakar will go to the line to shoot two. I've seen so much progress in her game over the course of just the early preseason. When Colorado State, she came right in off the bench. She was a bench player back then, but coming in, took a three-point shot, and then didn't stop there, just kept taking threes, right? She was one for seven in that game, and I think the coaches did a good job of managing that and saying, look, we need you to be on attack first, and then take those shots as they come to you throughout the game, and she's done a good job of just letting the game come, picking her moments to be effective off the dribble against the mismatch. Marie Kiefer picks up her second foul. Bubakar gets them both. Now BYU's lead is four. So a push from Ball State coming into the quarter and a push back now from BYU. Great response as Ball State swung first and BYU's responded. Sally slaps his hands on the scorer's table. Unhappy with what he was seeing, but he's happy with Bischoff getting two. Well, they're missing a couple of players that are open or not cutting as he would want. Not enough action when they're content to just move that ball and looking inside. BYU is giving them inside. They're giving them the high post look, but that's not what they want. Mackie Williams passes on the three. Forces it inside, knocked out of bounds off of Roush. It'll stay BYU ball with a timeout. Five minutes to go here in the first half. <laughs> TV is brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. E-Assist Dental Health Education Foundation. Learn more at visityourdentist.org. And by Mountain America Credit Union, official credit union of BYU Athletics. 25-23, BYU with five minutes left in the first half. And I'm just thinking, Kristen, this is the first time you and I have called a game where Jeff Judkins was not the head coach. Now, you've caught a lot of games with Spencer, with Coach Whiting, but for, for you and me, it's always been Juddy here. 21 seasons, 456 wins, 10 NCAA appearances, 
14 seasons with 20 wins, six-time conference coach of the year. There should be a banner here hung at oh, some point with his one. name on it because he deserves it. And uh, he's been a mainstay. And so you kind of have to take a double look down to the bench and go, well, it's a new day. Where is he? There's a new staff. Yeah. And, the, uh, the legend, Dave, for sure. I've enjoyed all of the years that I've spent with him. He coached me, obviously, and then I was with him all 21 years here from being a player to a broadcaster and you know the most wins on the men or women's side here at BYU. You see Amber Whiting there so she's got the challenge of her first year as a division one head coach and she inherits a team that lost five major impact players from last year. Shaley Gonzalez the WCC player of the year, Paisley Harding, Tegan Graham, Maria Alviero and shot blocker Sarah Hampson and then you have a challenging schedule out of the gate and a uh, slap on the back and a good luck. There you go. And th now this isn't the same job that it was a year ago. No. And so she's having to really make adjustments and I feel like she's done that. She's figuring out her rotation. She's making adjustments where she needs to. Her number one choice isn't to play a zone, but sometimes you've got to go with your personnel and what works and they figured out how to mix it up defensively, opting for the zone in this game and packing it in. She's doing a good job. And, you mentioned that win here at the Marriott Center, but I think that Washington State win last week when they were over on the islands in the Hawaii tournament, I just think really just gave this team a huge lift of confidence, and especially for Coach Whiting. Now, our officials are confused as to who's got a foul on who, so they're going to send all the teams, both teams, back to their benches. Uh, Brady Sally's finished his... Uh, debate with the officiating crew and so he's going to his huddle now the three officials are in front of us as um, they count up the fouls and and make sure the right person has been assessed with the right number as we shift from Judkins to Whiting and her new staff with the exception of Lee Kamard and uh, Stephen Arnold Kamard was a big piece one of her first big recruits to come back and be assistant Absolutely. Coach. you got to keep Kamar there. He knows what's going on, and he has a brilliant mind. Played for the men's team here at BYU. Uh, Morgan Bailey returned. She played here for BYU as well. We called a lot of her games when she was here. Erin Kalhoff came from Penn State. Natalie Leinhardt was here. She was an assistant uh, with Coach Mark Pope, his personal assistant, and then Josh Edwards, very talented video coordinator. Stephen Arlo, the strength and conditioning, has been with the team for previously a lot of newness for this team yeah. new faces new players new system well i mentioned a moment ago those five players gone and when they left so did this combined firepower from last season over 1600 points over 535 rebounds 473 assists 213 steals and 106 blocks that's from those five players last season alone 71 percent of the offense graduated or transferred as we saw Shaley go to Texas and lucky for BYU they returned the player in Lauren Gustin who made up the bulk of the rebounding absolutely so after all of that it's BYU ball with a shot clock winding down Mackie Williams looks up it's got to go up and it's blocked and a turnover for BYU and for coach Sally you have to applaud your team's effort out of that timeout we had a big kind of lull and figuring out some things at the clock BYU just forgetting uh, how much time's left and good defense from Ball State. Becky with it. This is Schaefer. Now Cofain. Back to Becky. Zone defense. And they try to shoot their way over it. Cofain on the offensive board. Kick back out. Now Clefane will try a three. This one's good. And Ball State's back up by one. The movement of the ball, continuing to get those reversals, so important what they do offensively. You don't hardly see any on-ball screens with this Ball State team offensively. They are just looking to move that ball and get player movement to get themselves open. Mackey Williams hands it to Gustin. Now gets it back. Back to Gustin in the corner. Barcelo on the drive, offensive board, up for three. That one's off the mark. Richard on the rebound. Here come the Cardinals at full speed. And this will be a foul on BYU. Smiler hits the deck. 
Nine points for Clefane, and watch, she's gonna hit this one right in the corner. She has been playing on attack down kill the majority of this game. You did see that three a moment ago. And look at her just attack Smiler. A lot of contact here, right to her face as well. As yeah, Smiler. that could have gone either way, just by the nature of the collision. So ball stayed by one, 339 to play. And the free throw is no good. We mentioned at the top that Kathleen suffered that season-ending injury, but before that, she had led the team in scoring through 13 games. At 16 points per game, was shooting 50% from the field. Very capable score. At 22 against Indiana East. Two-point game. Cougars on the run. Up for three. Barcelo. Barcelo picks her moments. Doesn't take a lot of threes. Just her fifth make of the season, but she is a great shooter and needs to shoot more confidently. At the other end, forced up by Richard. We got a whistle and a stop. Shot clock did not reset. Let's take a look at the three here from the corner. Transition three, wide open. Smiler does a good job staying in the middle of the court, getting the defense to draw in and the kick out to her shooter. Amanda, the sister of Alex Barcelo, who made a number of three-pointers on this floor in his BYU career, now playing overseas and getting paid to do it. Gustin passes out of the double team. Barcelo again. This one crawls out. Cougars by one, under three minutes to play. Stolen away, Falatea takes it from Schaefer. All the way in, blocked out of bounds, swatted away by Schaefer. The Lose it on one end and make a play on the other. The confidence to bring Falatea back in. She's playing with two fouls right here. Amber Whiting, very confident to bring her point guard leader in as she's attacking in transition. You see an out of bounds, help you with an opportunity underneath. Three-point ball, and this one is good by Smiler. And the Cougars by four. Smiler's 10th on the season. BYU with 12 made field goals, eight of them assisted. That's an exceptional stat, is what you want to see as a coach. Mo ball movement, finding open shooters, playing unselfish. Shot clock under 10. Clefane's got to go up. Loses it going up, and the Cougars bring it out. Falatea's got it. Here's Gustin. Gets it back on the baseline, makes her move up top. Calvert open for three. Fight for the board. Barcelo's got it, and she's fouled. Amanda is fouled by Becky. And with 1.35 to go, BYU will have the ball out of bounds. The fame comes out. And Barcelo hanging around the rim on that offensive board, and Gustin creating that opportunity. She's tipping it around in there. Even if she doesn't get it, she is just creating multiple chances for BYU. Stolen away. Becky takes it from Falatea. Now Becky up for a three. What a exchange for Becky on both ends of the floor. Back to a one-point game. Ten points now for Becky, the 5'8 sophomore. Defense leading to offense, and that's exactly what this Cardinals team wants to achieve. Gustin up and in, off the glass. Everything opened up. She's got a dozen. Inside players have had a hard time containing Gustin when she posts up for the lob and then off the dribble. On the steal. Out ahead, Falatea. 35-30. to 30. BYU getting it done defensively. I think the one thing they got to shore up is those quick threes in transition, finding a player. Been a very good half of basketball for the Cougars. Another rebound by Barcelo. Hands it to Falatea, about a second and a half difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And the Cougars can 
hold it for the last blast of the first half, up by five. Fawate will attack this on ball right here with Gustin setting. She's looking to turn downhill if she can. And if the defense rotates or pinches it, she's hitting Marcelo. Shot clock's at five. Falatea's in trouble. Has it taken away? Richard up with the layup. And that is how the half will come to an end. Not the plan. Falatea arguing for a foul. You be the judge. Watch this blitz right here. Excellent execution on the blitz. Some contact there, but letting them play out. And the Cardinals doing a good job executing that, trapping the ball and not giving anything on the pass. Usually when someone hits the floor, there's a quick whistle to follow. advantage in the paint. That's what they've been going to, trying to find Lauren Gustin down low. Our halftime stats are brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. And the rebounds, and Coach Sally just talked about this, BYU with a plus eight advantage on the boards, and that's crucial, especially when you're coming down so quick and taking early shots in the shot clock. They have to do a better job rebounding. BYU shooting 54% overall. Big reason for that is those 22 points around the rim. Cougars play at Boise State on Thursday. And at Utah State next Saturday. Ball State was just at Utah State this past Wednesday. The Cardinals will go home to Muncie and play Western Kentucky next Friday. Same starting fives as we begin the third quarter with BYU up by three and with possession. Gustin with a dozen points, three rebounds. Barcelo is the leading rebounder for BYU with four. And Barcelo impacting almost every stat in the stat sheet. She's got three points along with those four rebounds, three assists, two steals. Bubakar with four points. Balatea missing on the three. And here come the Cardinals. August daughter on that rebound for Ball State. That's another player that can really get involved in the offense. And she's one of kind of their go-to, their top three that they count on for scoring. She's been held scoreless to steal for two in this game. Kiefer back to Becky. Shot clock's under 10. Clefane on the drive. Well defended. Gustin on the rebound. Good defense by Barcelo. And Barcelo would have used that length at five foot eleven. She can just use the length to be disruptive on these guards. She's quick enough to stay in front, very smart to keep her body off. Balate up top in the Gustin. Kick to the corner, Barcelo. Now Smiler on the drive. Blocked out of bounds. And Smiler goes flying. Becky is heated and pulled away by her teammates. Very quickly, Gustin ran over there. She's got to be careful as well. See some contact right there. And, and then this push, and Smiler hit the floor, and that's probably going to cost Becky a personal foul. At least a foul, and yeah. then another technical on top of that, right. if not an ejection for the push. Yeah, she can pick up two fouls on that trip down the floor. The officials and uh, Ball State coach head <laughs> Brady Sally out conversing. He's managed to find his way into every conversation with the group of officials. Amber Whiting's over at her bench. And now the officials have separated uh, from the coach. Another look as we're tangled up here and then just the shove. At some point, they're going to come over and look at the video. So the foul and then that. That's going to warrant for sure a technical foul, if not an ejection for the excessive push. 8.52 to go. It's a three-point BYU lead. The conversation with our crew continues. They've yet to come over to look at the video. Ali Becky, one of those leaders we talked about. She's just a sophomore with 10 points in this game. She's got two rebounds, and along with Clefane leading this team with those 10 points. So they're going to take a media timeout, and while they do that, they're going to look at the video. 
and sort it all out. We hope they do, and we'll have some answers for you when we come back. Three-point lead, BYU here in the third. Honestly better. Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Waystar. And by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Dave McCann. Kristen Kozlowski, Kenzie Kerber here at the Marriott Center. Officials still looking at this play and trying to figure out what to do. Smiler was fouled on the shot and then went down on the push by Ali Becky. She was leaning that way to begin with. And uh, so it wasn't the most violent of all pushes, but that's going to cost her. We're just waiting to see how much. Yeah, it sure didn't look good, right? With the momentum kind of taking Smiler back and then the extra shove. Getting into it with Gustin. They're going to, now they want an uh, official calling for a piece of paper and a pen. They're going to, they're going to diagram this thing and, and create their list. Lauren Gustin came over afterwards and uh, they were looking at some of the video there as we were watching. Christmas around the world coming in here to the Marriott Center next week. That moves the Cougars to Vivint Arena men's basketball Tuesday night against Westminster at 9 Eastern time. And again Saturday afternoon at 3.30 Eastern against South Dakota. Both of those Salt Lake games live on BYU TV. We'll also have our one-hour pregame show for both of them. Fun time of year to go up to Salt Lake. You see Becky leading her case with her head coach. Now our officials have huddled back up and everybody waiting for their determination. You mentioned the men's schedule and we did touch on BYU now on the road for the women's side as they hit the road for Boise State next week and then... Amber Whiting's going to go up and see her son Jay's yes. play from Tuesday and then come back and then go back up with the team Thursday night. As you look ahead, Dave, that schedule for BYU gets a little grueling as they have to take on a ring to Utah team here at home on the 10th. And then we start the WCC play early this year before Christmas. Typically we start after, right around New Year's, but they're going to be with Utah home and then follow that up the next week at Gonzaga at Portland. The other two teams in the WCC, they're sitting at the top right now. Gonzaga a team that's beaten two top 25 teams recently. They've had a really good season so far in the preseason early and set themselves up for the WCC. Everybody's still waiting. This is taking way too long now as the officials continue to talk to each other about it. Right in front of the scorer's table. 8.52 left in the third quarter, 35 to 32. Think about that game yesterday in the Bahamas with the men's team down 23 points, came back to win it. The last time they were down, were well, they down 25 in the NCAA tournament, came back to win it, the largest comeback in the history of the big dance, and then they're down 23 and come back to win it against Dayton yesterday. So the coaches have been pulled together. Kristen's really good at reading lips. I'm trying. I'm trying to read those lips because we don't have them mic'd up. We should at this point, right? You can't foresee what's going to happen. But I, I could tell that they're going to obviously call the common foul on Becky, who fouled Smiler. She was going up, and then the excess that came, we're not sure yet. Smiler's going to go to the free throw line. She's been waiting about 10 minutes to do that. And Brady, Sally shaking his head, uh, not happy with the uh, determination. Although we're, we're just guessing here. Eventually the scores table will be clued in and then then we'll let you know. Crowd getting anxious because they've been sitting around for 10 minutes. And now the uh, push has been 
shown on the jumbo screen. And that got the reaction from the crowd. So three fouls have been called. Becky gets the first foul. White 11. They called it on Smiler in the tangle up. And an intentional foul on Becky. So Becky's going to pick up two fouls on the trip down the floor. Is it like offsetting penalties in football where you just play on? Although you're assessed with personals. Smiler gets her first foul. She's at the free throw line. Not exactly sure why Smiler was assessed a foul on that exchange. But they must have seen enough in the tangle up and, and trying to just nix this right here between getting too amped up between these two players. Smiler's waiting at the free throw line and Becky's on the bench. She's been given a timeout. This is hard as a player. I've been there before where you just have so much downtime when they're trying to figure this out and to get your energy back up and try to, you know, find that momentum as a team. All right. With that, we are ready. Okay. What we have here and now the public address announcer. So what they did call is that foul initially on Allie Becky and then two intentional fouls with Smiler and Becky each. So no flagrants on that one and Smiler's at the line. Knocks it in. BYU up 38-32. That's their largest lead. One of two. And because of both of those players picking up those intentional fouls, that did offset, as you mentioned, Dave, and we play on after the free throw. Bishop all the way in for a layup with the left hand. 36-34. Always interesting to me to see how teams respond and what they talked about in their huddle, the adjustments, when you have such downtime figuring out certain calls. Bubakar lobs it into Gustin. Cardinals are waiting for it. Sidney Schaefer knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, and Mule also getting involved in there, the 5'8 freshman. Some talented freshmen for Coach Sowley and Mule and Bolden who come in and give him some good minutes. Bubakar chases it down. Gustin drawn a double team every time she tries to post up. Smiler into the lane, off the glass, and the foul. And Smiler has been attacking the basket today. A dozen points. Right here, just anticipating, able to turn that corner as there was no help. Could be a miscommunication on how they're guarding that on-ball screen, going right out. Now, now, this is where Smiler has to be careful. Watch her clap. We missed it right there, but at the end, she clapped back at the players, and you cannot do that. She could have picked up another technical if she's not careful. Misses the free throw. Four-point lead for BYU. Bischoff with it. Trying to get past Bubakar. And the foul will go against Bubakar. That's her first today. Anna Clefane at 5'10". Excellent. Off the ball. And I'm not sure why they did give it to BYU, but that really upset Coach Sally. <laughs> How about Barcelo, though? She just stepped right up and said, I'll take this. <laughs> On the post-up, turnaround shot, good move. Gustin holds her ground, and a foul over the back on Kiefer. I think just as we would anticipate, the list is going to come a little quicker in making sure that they keep the game under control and not let the physicality get out of hand. So a quick call right there as Kiefer went over the back of Gustin. Full court pressure now for Ball State. Bubakar. Dribbles it right off her foot, out of bounds. BYU did much better with turnovers in the first half than they had 
in most of the games this season. That one, an unforced error. Well, they just had seven giveaways in the first half, as you mentioned, and they want to have that number total for a game right around 12, 13. They only had 14 against Carroll College, so making improvements in that area for sure. And Ball State gives it right back. Gustin on the steal. Smiler looks inside all the way across the floor. Marcelo. They have Gustin for a split second on that wing entry pass, but if you wait too long, the help side rotation is there. Bubakar looks in. You see that help. Falatea from the right side off the front end. Bischoff on the run for Ball State. Profane with it. Into the lane. And Sugar to the line and shoot two. Smiler with the foul. And that's number two on Smiler. Mackie Williams checks in for BYU and Smiler checks out. Some good minutes for Smiler. She goes out with 12 points. Anna Clefane's been a little quiet. She had a big first quarter and just tapered off a little as BYU's tightened up the defense, but they really need her offense. That is something that she brings for this team is her scoring ability. Sitting on 10 points and two rebounds. It's one of two, and it's 38-35. BYU with no middle. That's where Rose has got to flash. They've got to have that help. Palatea all the way in. The lob to Gustin. BYU back by five. And Gustin with 14. Just the control and the composure of Palatea. She does not get too high, doesn't get too low, not rattled. Turnover, Ball State. And with that, Ali Becky's going to check back in. Getting some booze from the crowd. Six thirty-two to go here in the third. Mackie Williams, Bubakar hands it over to Barcelo. BYU continuing to run this read and react. This will go against Gustin on the push. No basket. Gustin picks up the foul. The best matchup that the Ball State Cardinals have had is Roush in there doing a good job using her size at 6'3". They call the push right here. Watch. I don't know. I mean, it's definitely a separation because Gustin released, and sometimes it's confused for a push. But Roush with her size has been able to be more effective against Gustin. Now another foul on the other end. And this one will go against Barcelo. And a pair of free throws coming. I'm hoping that little skirmish doesn't turn this into like a 40 foul fest the rest of the way. You can still <laughs> well, want to play basketball. I think we're going to see more as we've already saw, seen early in the last couple of minutes. But Ball State is doing a little bit better job getting themselves to the free throw line because of the early whistles. They're playing on attack. Haven't taken a three point shot yet during this second half. And they're a very good free throw shooting team. And they average 22.2 attempts per game. So this is something they're used to getting to the free throw line. One of two, keeps the lead at four for BYU. Alatea. Bubakar looks inside. Rain-making three-point shot by Barcelo. And Profane on the run. Three-point look. Well, that one's good. And August Dotter gets her first three. It's a one-point lead. Good action, just movement away from the ball. And August are just relocating just enough to get herself open, set her feet, be able to pop that trigger quickly. Mackie Williams into Bubakar, who's been very quiet. Off the glass and in with her six points. Big bucket, back to a three-point lead. Coach Sally not happy with his team's execution on those on-ball screens, and they're trapping some, they're double-teaming on those, but when it's Gustin, they're squeezing it. Clefane. Kick back Bischoff for three. Good! And the game's tied at 42. Bischoff with 11. Ari Mackie-Williams too low on that. She's got to come out on those shooters. 
that's their game plan. I mean, they can quickly put up a three and even three, four feet beyond distance. Into the corner. Kick back. Gustin. Beautiful pass by Falatea. 44-42. And back and forth we go. Bischoff another three. That one. In and out. Bubakar hands it to Falatea. And Nani slows things down. So controlled when Nani has the ball and she just commands the offense and what they're going to do. Continuing to run this. They, they run a lot of ball screens. Falatea for three. And Becky on a rebound. I think Becky's going to hear that the rest of the game. Every time she touches the ball, the crowd. Baseline two. And we're tied at 44. August daughter, another bucket. Not a ton of transition. I mean, we've had a slow paced game, and Dave obviously with that call, it slowed some things down. But both teams running their half court set and really working the shot clock. And a bad pass by Mackey Williams. Cougars turn it over. Becky with it into the corner. Three. That one's off. Bubakar strong on the rebound. Two big rebounds back to back from Bubakar to secure that. Just keeping ball safe to one and done. Gustin Cullen for the ball. The work the other side. And a foul against Ball State. And that will go against Annie Roush. 3.02 to play, and we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a break with them. 44 to 44 here in the third quarter. BYU and Ball State on BYU TV. <laughs> Smiler is a junior out of Hamilton, New Zealand, and she's found a way to make an impact on both ends of the floor so far today. They're really attacking, playing down, you know, when they're trying to run her off the three, she's putting the ball on the floor, showcasing this versatility. That's been a huge improvement in her game. She's not just a spot-up shooter on the outside, but very capable of getting to the rim off the bounce. She's been to the free throw line three times with those 12 points. She's drawn four fouls. And the one, obviously, we saw with Allie Becky that put her on the bench for a little bit and drew an intentional foul. And they need her offensive boost, and it can't just be Lauren Gustin. Lauren Gustin has been the constant offensively and with the rebounds, but another player has to step up and be in double figures, and in this game so far, it's been Kaylee Smiler. Gustin with 16, Smiler with 12 for BYU. Clefane has 12, and Becky has 10 for Ball State. Bubakar is at the line with 3.02 to go here in the third, all tied up at 44. Rose, 88% on the young season from the stripe. Pretty good free throw shooter out of Frederick, Maryland. 19 points against Troy, so she has been able to showcase what she can do offensively. And particularly being moved into that starting lineup the last couple games where she's averaging 14 points per game, 7.3 rebounds. Gets one of two. Now with seven points so far today. 45-44. Becky with the ball. Just follow the trail of unhappy BYU fans. Richard in the lane. Travel. Kate Bullwaller into the game for the first time for BYU. That's as deep as Amber Whiting's gone with her bench. Falatea with it. Open for three. That one's off by Barcelo. A good luck, though. I think Barcelo yeah. 
Don't hesitate. You got to pull that trigger when you get an open look and follow Tate draws the defense in. Becky on the miss. Rebound for Gustin. She's got seven boards to go with her 16 points. She's always eyeing that double-double on that double-double watch and has six double-doubles through the first six games of the season. Look inside to Gustin. Here's Falatea. Falatea's got to hit a couple of these open threes. They're allowing her at top of the key. Warwaller passes on the three. Looks at it too. And it climbs back out. And then a reach foul on Barcelo. Good luck from Warwaller to put it on the floor. Nice little spot up shot on the baseline. And she can knock it down from the outside. A reason that she's in. Can hit from the outside. Some energy as well. Trying to get a spark for this team. Just been tangled up right around one or two point lead for BYU for the last couple minutes. Bolden is at the free throw line. Calvert comes back for BYU. Bubakar and Barcelo go out. Smiler returns for the Cougars. It's been a long third quarter through that long delay after the skirmish between Becky and Smiler and the miss from Sidney Bolden. BYU's done a much better job on Becky. She hasn't scored here in this quarter, and Profane as well, just two points for the leading scorer. So defensively, is really they've identified where those two players are at when they're defending in that zone. It's like a running theme of free throws. There's, there's going to be two. <laughs> there's only going to be one that goes in. Calvert calling for the ball down low. Gustin with it up top. Now Falatea on the drive. Puts it into the iron. Becky on the rebound. Here's Bischoff. Boys Ball State looking to retake the lead. Blocked by Calvert. And knocked out of bounds. And this is off of Richard. And BYU gets the ball. Well, defensively, BYU getting it done. See the help side rotation. Just going straight up, maintaining her defensive position. And then Vorwaller tying it up enough to just tip it off of the Ball State player. That's why she's getting minutes at this point in the game is to come in and just be a menace defensively and help her team. Smiler with it. Now the lob to Gustin. Good pass by Calvert, but it comes out to Falatea. Calvert on the give and go. And a foul is called against Calvert. And Bischoff runs over. You see, they've done a great job of this help side rotation, especially when the ball's on the wing. And Bischoff right underneath Calvert. Watch, this is a great angle right here. Crowd thinks she got there late. Minute to go here in the third. Tied at 45. Becky with it. It's been an entertaining basketball game here this afternoon. BYU and Ball State. Open look for three. Good. Dropped in by August Dodder. And Ball State's up by three. In and out game, and that's exactly what you want to see if your coach Sally is get that ball inside and then locate the shooters on the outside. The Cardinals are three for five from distance in this quarter. I'll tell you with it. Calvert's got it. And Calvert throws it away. Becky on the steal. Lazy pass. And now the Cardinals with the last shot of the quarter. Becky, under six seconds. Three-point shot. Calvert on the rebound. We're heading to the fourth, and Ball State leads it 48 to 45. Back and forth. This third quarter is gone. And an inside out. And August Daughter, eight points now, all in the third. Three-point Ball State lead on BYU TV.
BYU TV is brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. E-Assist Dental Health Education Foundation. Learn more at visityourdentist.org. And by Mountain America Credit Union, official credit union of BYU Athletics. Coming up tonight on BYU TV, it's BYU Sports Nation game day. Two-hour countdown to BYU and Stanford. The regular season finale for Cougar football. Game day starts at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain, right here on BYU TV. This guy going to need a nap in between now and the football <laughs> game so he can make it. The game doesn't start until 9 o'clock here local time. It's an 8 p.m. start at Stanford. Folks in the East Coast, it's going to test your diehard cougarness. Is that football game not going to start till 11 p.m.? Actually, 10 minutes after 11 on the East Coast. Fourth quarter here, BYU and Ball State. Ball State by three. Make that five as Becky hits the opening shot of the fourth. How about that? The double screen up top, and Becky just goes to work right through the middle of the zone for a floor uh, shot, but we just haven't seen that much this game. Calvert leaves it short on the answer back. Largest lead of the game for Ball State. They blew out Utah State on Wednesday in Logan. Well, they've been able to limit BYU really in the zone at rebounding. Bolden drops a three, and it's an eight-point game just like that. And BYU calls timeout. They can put up points in a hurry. As we saw right there, a big shot from Becky just to start things off. And then the freshman, Bolden, knocking down a three-point shot. 9.23 to go. And we'll take a break. Eight-point lead for Ball State. Eight unanswered. To start the fourth. <laughs> Marion Center, Dave McCann, Kristen Koslowski, and Kenzie Kerber. Ball State's open up a 53 to 45 lead with 9.23 to play. The ball State at five quick points here in this fourth quarter and attacking the middle of the zone and the freshman knocking down a big shot. Something that BYU had emphasis on in their game plan is making sure they find shooters out of that zone and contest all of the shots. One of the keys of the game. Awatea looks for a lane, finds one, has it blocked, out of bounds. A swat by six foot two Marie Kiefer, a sophomore out of Alexandria, Kentucky. It's so important what they do defensively is that anchor underneath and making sure that they identify when there's penetration. You got to get over there and help out. Smiler open for three. And they've got to have a few of these start falling. 53-48. Smiley, one of the best three-point shooters on this team and doesn't need a ton of space to get the shot up as we saw there, but she's got to shoot it quickly to get those feet set. She's got 15. Kiefer hands it back to Clefane. Bolton's got it. Shot clock's at seven. Kiefer up for a three. Bubakar. Brings out the rebound. Smiler, another three. This one into the iron. Out comes Ball State. Bolden with it. Takes it in. Offensive foul. Fawatea holding her ground. And Sydney Bolden picks up the personal. Back come the Cougars. Here's another look at Smiler's three that she knocked down a moment ago and followed to a little relief. It hasn't been her best offensive performance in this game, but drawing that charge, followed to just one for 10 from the floor, 0 for 5 from distance, but her presence is needed out there with the ball control for BYU. This one a wild shot with no chance, and back come the Cardinals. Becky with it. 
Everyone's going coast to coast. Gus on the rebound. Back come the Cougars. Excellent job from Smiler not to bail out Becky, even though she was going to a secondary move, just to hold her ground. Ten players out there by my count, but a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. So you got to go back to what works, right, for BYU, getting it in the paint with Lauren. And I know there's been adjustments, but she's got to have touches. It's been a while since she's had the ball down low, hasn't it? Fawatea on the drive. Another four-step shot. Gets her own rebound. Goes up to beat the shot clock. Out comes Ball State. Bischoff going all the way in with the left hand. Off of the Cardinals, and BYU gets it. 7.19 to go. Kenzie, what do you got? Dave, in that timeout, Coach Whiting told her team they need to be way more assertive and aggressive, and they need to get a stop than score, then communicate within each other, and I think they've done a much better job at that since that timeout. Kenzie, thank you. You can see the frustration on the face of Fawatea. Smiler gets it back to Nani. We get close to seven minutes. Here's Gustin. Going to take it up herself, throw it up. Out of bounds off of BYU. Their shot selection and just not taking high percentage shots in the offense for BYU. And BYU wanting that ball back for the Cougars. I think it was off Becky. And BYU now, they've come out of that zone, last possession as well. Trying to limit the three-point shot attempts. There's a good look here. That one off the mark. August's daughter had a wide open look. The foul will go against Ball State. And Kiefer picks up the personal foul. 6.35 to go. Annie Roush checks back in. And Marie Kiefer will check out with her fourth personal foul. Well, Dave, even though BYU's played this entire game almost in a 2-3 zone defensively, they've done a fantastic job rebounding the basketball, only giving up four offensive rebounds. And we saw a foul right there as Gustin was trying to secure the rebound. They've done excellent, not allowing Ball State extra opportunities. Bubakar into the lane. Forces up another bad shot. And four bad shots in a row by BYU. Have not scored in about three minutes. Becky for three. And that one makes it 56 to 48. And this is where Ball State has the strength, the advantage. They have more scoring ability, more balanced scoring than BYU. We've seen just two players really be consistent in this game in Gustin and Smiler at putting the ball in the hoop. And neither of them have been shooting in the last few trips down the floor. Here's Smiler. Shot clock is under 10. Gustin on the drive. Can't finish. Out of bounds it goes. I don't think that shot hit the rim as well. So the, the clock did not reset. It'll go to Ball State. 5.33 to go. And the Cougars got to find themselves here. In big trouble now. Down by eight. And with a string of bad shot selections. The Ball State is now 10 for 23 from distance. Shooting 43% from three. That has to be something BYU very focused on, not allowing any easy looks on the perimeter as we're down the stretch the last five minutes. Another open three. This one off the iron and out of bounds as August Dutter had a wide open look. 5-10 to go in BYU ball. That could have easily gone in and just not communicating on those screens. But So when there's a screen to get a player open, it was Nani Falate and Rose Bubakar. They have to communicate if they're going to switch or if they need help and they're stuck trying to get through the screen. Falatea hands it to Gustin way away from the basket. Barcelo on the drive. Gets it back. Now Bubakar, shot clocks at six. Smiler on the drive. Third layup with one second left on the shot clock today for Smiler. And she's got 17. She had a wide open lane because they were able to get a skip, but there's just a lot of congestion for BYU. Not, a lot, not good spacing offensively to get the draw and kick. Forced up by Ball State. Gustin, the jump ball called. 
extra hustle by Clefane from behind. But the arrow favors BYU. That'll be the seventh double-double for Lauren Gustin as she secured that rebound or tied it up. 16 points, 10 rebounds, and she's had a double-double in every single game for the Cougars. Look at the drive. See the skip? And that's when you want to attack, penetrate, and get to the rim. 56 to 50, 4 16 to go, and BYU basketball. Spacing crucial right now in this possession for BYU. Just get good spacing, be in the right spot, clear out the key. If Gustin can't go to work in there, then they've got to clear it out, allow the drivers to get to the rim. Barcelo hands it to Gustin, top of the key. Now Smiler with 10 on the shot clock. Foul down low. This will go against Ball State. And that will be Alex Richard picking up the foul. Her second. Timeout with 3.55 to go. 56 to 50. Well, Coach Sally not happy with that call. <laughs> glass every single time or crash the boards and then he's got keys which are typically your centers they're going to take the ball out of bounds and they're going to be the trail big 18 point difference from the three-point line in favor of ball state and 18 point difference from points of the paint for byu the officials signal the full timeout and then they change it to a 30 second timeout in the middle of the full timeout and that's why the lights were down and the teams were on the bench Missed by Smiler. Three thirty to go. This is where you have to buckle in. Defensively get stops if you're BYU to chip away at the lead. Becky open for three. Another rebound by Gustin. Ball State's done a nice job on Gustin with the double team. You can see him working away from the ball. Now both Gustin hits the floor two players are down it's going to be against richard 14 fouls on ball state none on byu well, richard just picked up one before the timeout but watch the entanglement right here is they're kind of hooked up i think she's trying to sell getting a, a charge call right there and an offensive on lauren and then they both hit the deck byu will have some free throws coming and the, the way they've struggled to shoot from the field, I think they'll take it Absolutely. as soon as they can get it. It's one for nine in their last nine attempts from the floor. Altea with it. Barcelo, give and go. And throws it away. Another turnover for BYU, 3.03 to go. And these turnovers that didn't show up in the first half are defining the second half. No, lucky for the Cougars. Ball State hasn't shot the ball as well. Here is late. Just one for seven. Haven't scored in three minutes, but you can't continue to go on like that. If you're BYU, you've got to tap into this six-point lead. I know it's a two-possession game right now, but not a lot of momentum, momentum on the Cougars' side. Bischoff's got it. Shot clock's at three. And Fawatea with a reach-in with three seconds on the shot clock. Another mental mistake for BYU. This one hurts. Puts 20 seconds back on the shot clock and gives Ball State another look at it. We talked about it when you're the quarterback. You have so much pressure on you. It, it, it doesn't have to be fair, and a lot of times it isn't. But when you struggle, it makes it so much harder on everybody else. Bischoff, wide open for three. Good! 59 to 50, Ball State. Miscommunication once again, those screens and the action, the interplace action that BYU is not getting through and communicating and getting to that shooter. Nearing two minutes to go. And a foul against Ball State. That's Richard. 
And that's the 15th foul, and BYU's going to go to the free throw line with 2.02 to play. Last three fouls coming on Richard, just being too physical with Gustin. We saw him entangled as well, and then right there, as the cutter was trying to slash through. Bountea, one of 13, 0 for 5, shooting threes. Two points. Here's Gustin at the free throw line. She gets the first one to go. These are the first free throws of the quarter for BYU and probably coming at a good time, as you mentioned, Dave, when you're not shooting well. And BYU just two for 12 in this quarter, one for three from distance. 18 for Gustin to go with her 11 rebounds. Seven point game with two minutes to play. Calvert with the foul over the back. On a, that's the second team foul for BYU. They're gonna have to do some more if they want to force Ball State to go to the free throw. 148 to go, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Need some defense. Clefane with it. Blocked and out of bounds. It belonged to Ball State with 16 seconds on the shot clock. That's your freshman, Amanda Barcelo, just keeping her feet moving and staying in front of the defender. A great block. As you mentioned, not fouling. It's not what you want right now. You don't want to put them on the free throw line. Back door, another block. Calvert coming around, denying August daughter. Here comes BYU. Bautea. Smiler up for three. That one's off, and she knew it as soon as it left her hands. She's got the rebound. Takes it back out. Try the other side with Barcelo. Looking for two off the glass and in. Five-point game, 119 to play. Assistant Lee Kamar calling for the team to just get up. Some extra pressure. Time is not on your side right now, and you've got to force another turnover and get a stop. Yeah, I thought Becky right there maybe walked as she kind of just took an extra step. Lafayne with it. Under a minute to go, and the shot clock's at 10. Becky with it. Shot clock now at four. Bischoff not going to get it off, and Ball State turns it over. That was a massive stop, not even to allow them to get a shot off at this time and this crucial point in the game. Props to BYU defensively for executing. So BYU calls a timeout. They are checking to see if they want a 30 or a full. 30 second timeout with 45.3. BYU team this season, they're one and three when they lead at the half. They led at the half in this one, finding themselves down five. Enough time, though. There's enough time, but for how much they've been struggling to shoot the ball, Dave, they've, I think they got to get something quick at the basket and try to draw a foul. Definitely a team in the rebuild still trying to figure out their identity. And, and, and Lauren Gustin is, is solid, and everyone else is kind of hit and miss. And on a day where, where Fawatea, who comes in averaging just under 15 points a game, delivers two and, and a bevy of missed shots and some turnovers, puts pressure on everyone else, and Ball State doesn't have that problem. Their coach is in his 11th season with the Cardinals, and his players have been together for some time. Uh, a different story for BYU, but they're trying to find a way here with 45 seconds left down by five. Falatea's got it, drives baseline, gets the two with 41 seconds to go. Now it's a one possession game. Very quickly, with just four seconds, they're able to get a shot. But now you've got to get a stop. If you're not going to foul, you've got to quickly get a stop. Bishop on the drive, blocked by Gustin and out of bounds. So the shot clock resets to 20 with 30.1. See Gustin using her feet to catch up. Even though she may have trailed just a little bit, she has the length to contest this shot. I like that the officials just let it play out. Not enough contact to call a foul. Timeout, 30 second timeout. Again, the foul situation, BYU's got 
just two team fouls, so they're going to have to foul three more times to force Ball State to the free throw line. So that's not the plan. The plan is to defend right here and get a possession to tie as you watch Falatea with just her second basket of the game. Well, they've done a good job the last couple possessions defensively, so put your faith in that, right? Amber Whiting is a defensive-minded coach. Defense first is what she wants to generate her offense. And they've held the Cardinals just one for seven in their last seven attempts. That's where you got to dig down deep at the BYU right here, protect the basket, but nothing easy. Becky to throw it in. Smiler to defend. Nowhere to go, and then to Bischoff. Beats the five-second count. Right back to Becky. Becky a long way from the basket. Shot clock's at seven. Now she makes her move, puts it up off the glass, and in! Shot of the game, Allie Becky. Down by five. Falate has got to go up. Three-point shot. That one's off the mark. Gustin on the rebound. Smiler goes up for three. That one is off. And with 1.7 seconds to go, it'll be Ball State basketball. And the Cardinals are going to get out of here with their fourth win of the season. Well, their sophomore leader, Allie Becky. How big was that? Shot clock going down. She had a ton of pressure well beyond three as they were blitzing and double teaming her in the on ball. And she kept her calm and her composure. Just wasting that time. Right over Gustin off the glass and in. Becky now has 17 points on 6 of 13 shooting in this game. We highlighted her and we we knew that she would or we highlighted Clefane, but Becky for sure is a player that they've counted on this entire season. Whether the numbers have been there or not, she just does so much for this team. Clefane with 12 and as you mentioned, Becky's got 17. None bigger than the uh, two a moment ago and the officials are checking to see if any more time should be on the clock. There's 1.7, it's a five point difference. I'm not sure if a tenth of a second matters here at this point. And they're also looking to see is that off BYU or is it off of Ball State? And uh, Barcelo. Seeing here as uh, Gustin saves it. This was earlier before the the three. Nice effort effort by Gustin. Twelve rebounds. For Gives you everything she's got every every game out. You got to imagine the frustration for Gustin, who last season was surrounded by firepower, two scores, top 15 in school history, and a shot blocker to help, and, and a Tegan Graham up top, and Albiero to distribute. All that's gone. Balance and the pressure. She's right? here. Yeah. yeah. Now it's. It's almost like, uh, it, and it can't be, but in the early stages, it's been Lauren Savas. And um, she faced a double team all game long today. And impressive that she managed 18 points. Yeah, a lot of credit to Ball State and their game yeah. plan on her because they, early on, BYU was able to find her in that high-low look. But as the game progressed, they made adjustments and they really sunk in that weak side help defender to limit her inside and not give anything easy. And it, it, they've made it tough on her. I mean, those 18 points and 12 boards, she was working the entire game to achieve those numbers. And she is a workhorse. She's able to achieve that. But they made it tough for her. BYU led by three at half. Ball State led by three after three. And then the surge right at the start of the fourth was the difference. And the Cardinals come into Provo. And they complete their Beehive State sweep. Blowing out Utah State on Wednesday. They come in here and, and win a good fight, 61 to 56. They go to four and two on the season. BYU slips to two and five with a tough road trip to Boise State next Thursday and then Utah State a week from today. Our play of the game is brought to you by eAssist Dental Health Education Foundation. Reminding you dental cleanings are essential for your health. Leading by three with time winding down. Ali Becky off the glass makes it a five point game and puts it away. Yeah, this is the go ahead bucket right here. As she was able to seal the deal up and over Gustin. The composure to finish high on the glass. 17 points, six for 13. And